people of YouTube, this is Gray's Guitars. I am Steve Gray, and today we're going to be doing an interesting comparison between the cheapest Epiphone and the most expensive, holy crap, this thing is heavy, Gibson. So, since I'm holding it already, let's talk about the specs of the Gibson Les Paul Custom Plus. This is a mahogany body, one-piece mahogany body, one-piece mahogany neck. Uh, two-piece, I believe it's a quadruple A flame maple top, uh, ebony fretboard, obviously you got all the fancy binding and all that jazz, Grover tuners, everything's gold, this is all stock minus the strap locks, uh, strap buttons I should say have been switched to strap locks, uh, gold Dunlop strap locks I believe, uh, ebony board, mother of pearl, uh, 490R, 498T set I believe on this bad boy. And then moving back to the Epiphone Les Paul SL, or the new versions are called the Melody Maker, this is pretty much the cheapest Epiphone you can buy for the most part. I think this is around $150 to $170, depending on where you look. There might be one more model that's a little cheaper than this, but uh, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to do a video of the cheapest Epiphone versus the most expensive Gibson. Yes, I understand there might be a cheaper Epiphone, and there's definitely more expensive Gibsons out there, but pretty much Gibson Les Paul Custom, that's top of the line from Gibson USA anyway, outside of going to their actual custom shop, Murphy Lab, all that, and then an Epiphone Les Paul SL, which everybody, this is like their, their equivalent of a Squire Strat starter pack with an amp. So we're going to do one, two, three neck metal bridge neck metal bridge this does have a mute switch if you saw my past video that i will not be using in this video but we're going to even use the same strap same cable uh amp is the pv6505 plus running into some celestian vintage 30s as i said we're going to start clean we'll switch to overdrive we'll do clean and overdrive on this one clean and overdrive on the other one and i'm going to fix it in editing so it's kind of a back-to-back -back comparison most likely in that way you don't have to worry about that everything is tuned to standard uh the custom actually does need a little bit of a setup i noticed while i was tuning it so uh we're gonna give the uh the epiphone some uh a couple of bonus points for actually me setting it up as opposed to the custom where that does stay in its case a lot uh price point for that custom if you were to buy it right now uh is going to be around four thousand dollars where on a used market, where if you bought this Epiphone, you can probably find this for $100 to $120. Uh, so yes, that is a completely massive size comparison. And the question that we're trying to answer uh, is, you know, is the basically, is the $4,000 guitar worth it? You know, is there a $3,900 $3, difference, we're going to say, $3,800, $3,900 difference between these two guitars? And essentially, it's aesthetics. I mean, yes, it is pickups to a certain extent, electronics, hardware, everything like that. Um, Wood-wise, the woods are very different, too. This is an alder body, maple neck. It's either a rosewood fretboard or most likely Indian Allure. That is my best guess. Proprietary tuners, plastic nut, whatever hardware is going on in here. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, let's play some stuff. I am using a V-Pick traditional light, if you are wondering what the pick is. <laughs> Gibson Les Paul Custom Plus. 
Uh, yet again, 490R, 498T pickups. The Epiphone, I believe, is a 650 SC, SC, and then it's like a 700 CS. I think that's what they're calling them. But uh, yeah, everything's at 10 for both of the guitars, just for a reference. There is a tone knob on the Epiphone. It is hidden under the pick guard, and it is set at 10, just for a reference here. But uh, same, as I said, this thing is significantly heavier, too. This bad boy is put, almost pushing 10 pounds. It's just under. It's, it is a heavy list ball. <laughs> on the guitar because the pickups are a little louder.
switching down to just a bridge pickup. <laughs> do seem to be a little bit hotter than the Epiphone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
together. <laughs> Gibson and is it worth $3,800 difference between these two guitars? I don't think so. Is there a difference in price? A hundred percent. I mean in terms of cosmetics, in terms of wood, in terms of pickups, you got to give it to the Gibson hand down. You know, better wood, better pickups, better hardware, but 
you don't really need a fancy top. You don't need a beautiful flame maple top like this. You can get a plain maple, you know. The mahogany can be whatever. It doesn't have to be pretty looking. The mahogany on this isn't really nothing to boast over. It's, more, it's all about the top, not about the base. And the, or the back, if you will. But uh, you can put some decent Grover tuners on there. Put some decent hardware on there. Throw some Gibson USA pickups in there. Epiphone's actually doing pretty solid with their pickups right now. It used to be the second you bought an Epiphone Les Paul, that was the first thing to go, is you immediately throw out the pickups because they sounded like complete and utter trash. But uh, not so much the case anymore. But uh, you can still swap them if you want to. But uh, if you took that Epiphone, you put the Gibson pickups in it, let's assume they were $300, you upgraded all the hardware, we'll say the tuners were 100 bucks. the bridge and tailpiece was $100, you're still talking... A significant difference you would still be in the epiphone for less than a thousand dollars you'd be in it around 900 bucks and it would probably sound very similar to this yes the binding and the fret nibs take a lot of extra work all the multiply binding on the front and back takes a significant amount of extra time to do which is why they give you an expense mother of pearl on the fretboard also expensive ebony is typically a premium tone wood uh, the nut on this also might have been replaced in retrospect looking at it um, usually they have a little bit of lacquer on them. This one does not, so good possibility the nut got replaced on this guitar as well at some point, and it's uh, about 30 years or so. We'll say 30. So somewhere around it, 30 years old. I think this was made in the 90s, uh, give or take a few years. But uh, is it? Well, that's, that's what it is. Is it worth the difference? Now, in terms of value, this thing is always going to be worth significantly more than this. You can upgrade the Epiphone to Kingdom Come. It's still not going to be worth more than a couple hundred bucks. Where this theoretically, unless everybody decides they hate guitars and there's a world apocalypse or something ridiculously crazy, uh, this is still going to hold a whole lot of value, uh, which is why this is kind of a case queen, if I'm being honest with you. I'm afraid to scratch it up. I'm afraid to beat it up. I don't want to wear out the gold. I know they say, oh, but it's an instrument. You got to play it. And I understand that. But a lot of times these things are essentially collector's pieces, art pieces as well. And it's something you hang on your wall. Uh, I don't have something that's nitro safe to hang this on my wall. This actually came pre-stand rashed. Uh, on the headstock, which we're just going to leave it alone. But, um, yeah, I would say in terms of playability and sound, obviously the Gibson is going to win this hands down, but to get that sound, you really don't have to pay $4,000 to get it. You can take an Epiphone, put Gibson pickups in it. Heck, Epiphone currently has offerings that have Gibson pickups in it for significantly cheaper than something like this, where this is just an ungodly amount of money. They call these doctors lawyers guitars, is what a lot of people call them, because those are the only people that can afford them. Um, I'm not going to tell you how I got this guitar. I'm not going to tell you if it's even mine, because it may not be mine. No, I did not steal it, first and foremost. Let's let's just get that out of the way. I did, I did not steal this. But uh, you may see this. If you do want to see a separate video ju on specifically just this guitar, um, I can do that, but it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Uh, the only thing that at some point I need to put tens on this because this has nines. They're a little bit too light. I think I put the nines on this when I first got it because that's what I had lying around. But uh, a little bit too loosey goosey for me. I think the truss rod needs a small adjustment. Uh, Action is pretty decent though, in all honesty. But that'll probably have to get changed if I mess with the uh, the truss rod. As well, the switch tip is kind of wonky on this one. It doesn't like want to fully click when I have it screwed in all the way, so I gotta kind of let the switch tip be a little bit loose. There you go for all those people that are knocking Gibson quality, but you're talking 30 year old guitar, so who the heck knows what happened to it in the past 30 years? But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe, notification bell, share, like, all that fun stuff. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.